what you can see behind me is Windsor Castle. Just a few days ago, Queen Elizabeth II was laid to rest in Windsor Castle, having made the journey from Balmoral, where she passed away, through Edinburgh, through London, all the way to Windsor Castle. Windsor is in Berkshire. Berkshire is a historic county in southeast England and just outside of London. It is one of the home counties and Berkshire was recognised by Queen Elizabeth II as the Royal County of Berkshire in 1957 because of the presence of this place in front of you. Wow, we're going to be checking out some um, Royal Football Clubs today as you'll have seen from the title of this video but I feel like I can't press on through Windsor without showing you this first look. Even the history is in the pubs. Look at this. It had its 300th anniversary in 2019 and it even shows you, look, from 1719 when it was set up, all the different kings and queens that were raining when this pub stood here. Look at that, George I for what, 13 years in the early 1700s all the way through to Victoria. There's an incredible statue of Victoria just around there and uh, George obviously, the Queen's dad and uh, Queen Elizabeth, they're gonna have to uh, update this now and add Charles to it. Everything as you can imagine has a royal feel to it. Look even there, the Duchess of Cambridge, the name of a pub. There's a pub named after Queen Victoria as well. I'm sure there's other stuff named after other royals as well, but I will be showing you Windsor just very briefly and Eton, if you know Eton. Maybe you're not from the UK, I'll explain when we get there. Um, Eton, just over the River Thames, were the last amateur team to win the FA Cup. It's quite incredible. They deserve a full video of their own, which I would love to do eventually. Um, but as I would have mentioned earlier, we are exploring royal football clubs today in and around the incredible county of Berkshire and what a beautiful place this is I mean especially just now with all the pageantry we've had recently look at that what a cool castle right in the town centre here at Windsor crossing the Thames Windsor is through there look you can even see Windsor Castle poking up through there here we have the River Thames it's a lovely little bridge and we're heading towards the world famous Eton Wow, look, you can tell who um, like comes to school either to work or to study here at Eton. Look at all these guys with their robes on. This is where the poshest of the posh come to school. This is where I believe David Cameron came, Boris, look at these guys. All your favourite Prime Ministers, well a lot of them anyway, I think, came to school here in Eton. I've never really given much thought to where Eton actually is before. I didn't really realise it was in Windsor or so close to Windsor Castle as well, but yeah, very, very famous. I'm going to read something out online which actually explains what Eton College is for a lot of people who don't know. So, Eton College is a public school in Eton, Berkshire, England. It was founded in 1440 by Henry VI under the name King's College of Our Lady of Eton by Side Windsor intended as a sister institution to King's College, Cambridge, making it the 18th oldest headmasters and headmistresses conference school. The school is the largest boarding school in England and charges up to 46,000 pounds per year. So some famous people who have studied at um, Eton, apparently Prince William, Ian Fleming, the author of James Bond, Hugh Laurie, the actor, George Orwell, Aldous Huxley, a couple of uh, famous authors from the sort of more early 1900s, and Boris and David Cameron have been here as well. I'm not sure how many other prime ministers too, but what have we stumbled upon here? Looks like we've stumbled upon a football pitch. I honestly didn't even know this was here when I just got to the end of that little sort of history lesson for you guys. I don't know if non-students are even allowed to bowl around these areas, but this is cash money around here. You have to have some serious sheets to be able to, uh, to come here. That first football pitch we saw is just underneath that little bridge there I've walked through. The rest of Windsor and that is through there, but I'm just following Google Maps. There's apparently like playing fields and look, you can see nets through here. If they don't have something to commemorate their old FA Cup wins, I will be telling you about it in just a second, then they're really, really missing a trick. But uh, it's a long shot. Anyone from Eton watching, I would love to do a video with someone. I bet you got historians and that, and old players who maybe coach here or work here or whatever. If there's anyone about, I would love to do a video about the football history of Eton. It is insane. It deserves a whole video. Like I say, this is more just a flying visit while I investigate the royal football teams of this county. But yes, 
Eaton needs a whole video on its own. So we found the football pitches of Eaton. I'm not sure if this is exactly where they would have played their football matches when they had their really big successes in the 1800s. Maybe they would have done. I'm, I guess it's pretty traditional and they wouldn't have moved things around too much. Um, I don't see any big golden shining gleaming tower or plaque or commemoration to their incredible successes, but let me just tell you about it quickly. The Old Etonians Association Football Club were formed in 1871. They were founded by Lord Kinnaird, who is said to be the first ever football superstar. He played in nine FA Cup finals, a record that still stands to this day. But not all the finals were for Old Etonians. Some of them were for Wanderers as well, which were a hugely historic team of the time too. On the 25th of March, 1882, Old Etonians won the FA Cup, and that is the last time an amateur team or a true blue team has won the FA Cup. And who did they beat at the Oval in London? None other than current championship team, Blackburn Rovers. Wow, here we go. Yeah, proper old old school non-league ground it seems like this one. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But we uh, yeah, we've probably got one of the nicest pitches around. It's, the, seems like a big pitch as well. Um, the, the, the pitch itself is about 100 by 65. Okay, yeah. But because it's got big runoff and there's a lot of space, it makes it look bigger than it actually is. Okay, actually yeah, fair is. enough. So, I'm Kevin, Kevin Sot, I'm the founder and chairman of the club. Amazing, and we've just stumbled upon each other here. Yes. You're the chairman of Windsor FC, and yeah. the badge is really significant to the area as well, isn't it? Could you just explain the different elements of it? Yeah, so on the top we've got the castle, uh, which is in itself unique, um, it's round tower. Yep. It's really <laughs> we've got one of the planes coming over yeah, as well. Yeah. There we go. Authentic. Yeah, of course. And what airport is that coming from? Heathrow. Heathrow, of course, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, the, the, the central moving represents the Thames. Yep. Underneath there's a stag, and that's a royal stag, distinctive by the fact it's got six antlers, and that reflects the town. Um, and this is Stag Meadow, so all those bits kind of connect. Amazing. And so, the club that is here now, Windsor FC, was formed in 2011. Yes. But there was a club previously that folded. Is that right? Yeah, Windsor and Eton. Windsor yeah. and Eton. So they basically dropped the Eton and just become Windsor now. Is that correct? Yeah, in, in very simple terms. Yeah, yeah, in naming terms. And so, have you got any rivals in the area who maybe also have sort of royal links with their badge or their stadium or anything? Um, well, interestingly enough, very few clubs that I'm aware of have uh, a royal patronage. Um, Windsor and Eton, which was here before, used to have royal patronage. Um, the Duke of Edinburgh was the patron, I think, for over 50 years. Wow, actually. really? Was yeah. he? Okay. So, um, so that's Philip. Philip, yeah. Was the patron of the club here for yeah. over 50 years? And uh, but Virginia Water have a patron, uh, although he's, he's he or she is a royal, but I, to be honest, they're not senior royal, so mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. But um, and Maidenhead have somebody who who I think is foreign, okay, he's a ro foreign royal. Oh, okay, uh, but, right. But in truth, um, pass <laughs> and so, although, although we you know, people still call us the royalists, yes. So for, oh, yeah, that's for, your nickname, right. For, for obvious reasons. So. And just final question then, um, what tier do you currently play in? Uh, step five of the non-league system. Okay. So if we got promoted, four, three, two, one, uh, for five seasons would be a division two side. So this is the training pitch as well then. So you've got the main stadium there and all this yeah. training area here. Wow. And then it goes great on, straight onto the Great Park, so it's a fantastic location. Oh, I did read online that the when the club was originally set up all the years ago, that it was said that this was the Great Park and they needed somewhere to play football. Is that yeah. right? Do you know about that? Yeah, uh, well, um, it was apparently, so this is Crown Estate land and it was apparently King George V who sorted out this space. Yeah. Um, which is called Stag Meadow, um, and I think that was in 
1909, something, wow, okay. like, 1910, yeah. something like that. Look at this, we even have the green and red, the colours of the club, in like a Union Jack style with the badge here. Um, look, with a castle, and that's to represent the River Thames, and then the green of the club and the, and the pitch, the ball obviously, and then the, the Royal Stag. And then look at this, the amount of flyovers, I've only been here five minutes, we've already seen three or four planes going over. But look at this, what a cool ground. I've not just been given a scarf, I've also been given a shirt. That'll be going straight in the backdrop in the studio when I get home. Absolutely love it. Right, next ground, here we come. And actually, just before I do take you down to the next ground, I want to just mention one club that I won't be seeing today that are in the area. It's kind of not on my route of where I need to go and then get home and get my Stoke video up that I'm uploading today and get part of this one edited. I'm always so busy when I'm on the road that I can't always see everywhere, sadly, but it's Maidenhead United and it's a shame I can't go there for, for this video because they're a big club and they're a historic club, non-league club, but a very, very cool one indeed. They have a really, really unique selling point to them, which I'm going to have to do for a video one day. So I'm not going to go into it just now. I won't be seeing them in this one, but one day when I'm back down, I've got friends and family in this area, so I do come down quite regularly. When I'm next down, I'm going to do it in a video. So yeah, Maidenhead United fans, I will come very, very soon. Right, this time we're going to the next ground. Just down there, out past that road is Royal Ascot Racecourse, and this way is the home of Ascot United Football Club. Let's see if we can find anybody here. We've had some fantastic luck today, haven't we? This is reminiscent of my trips to Ireland and Northern Ireland, where no matter where I went, grounds seemed to be open and I could just wander on in. And that's been the case here with the Royal Grounds today. And, wow, look at this. Thin little section of stadium that you, you can walk around here. As you may be able to tell, the uh, pitch here is Astro, unlike at um, Windsor FC, where we just were. This club were formed in 1965 and they used to play their home games at a place called Sunning Hill. But, look, as you may be able to tell from some of those fences over there, this is actually part of Ascot Racecourse. Despite this being sort of a football area, I believe that a few years into their history or when they were looking to move stadiums, um, their actual Royal Ascot Racecourse actually said to the club that they could build or maybe the racecourse themselves built um, the stadium on part of what was just north of the actual racecourse itself and one of the coach uh, houses or something along those lines. But look, as you can see there, look, some sort of horse racing area i really don't know the terminology of any sport except from football but look at it lovely rural looking ground here with the trees in behind another ground that we've got into absolutely buzzing about this a nice cool fact about them though their first ever fa cup game was in the 2011-12 season and their match was against wembley not in wembley sadly but again, well, it might have been in wembley not wembley stadium um, and that was the first ever fa cup match to be streamed live on facebook I've just been shooed out of Ascot, sadly, by a rather bossy lady who works here, but it's all good. We got inside, we've been in at Windsor, we got on the pitch at Old Etonians, we've had a look around Windsor Town as well. There's another ground coming up in three, two... So Google Maps has brought me here. I'm actually on the lookout for Bracknell Town, and I've just searched again, and apparently they now play at Sandhurst, which is about 20 minutes away from here. I guess they must have moved ground, but yeah, I was trying to find Bracknell Town, but as I was driving here, I thought, actually, how funny it was at Ascot United, the um the kind of reception that i got um compared to windsor fc i mean windsor fc i turned up there was somebody there at the club i was welcomed in got an interview a shirt and a scarf that was absolutely phenomenal more than i ever could have asked for these videos are really about um turning up seeing who we meet um i feel like some of the best interviews some of the best stadiums people i've ever met and seen got into um in terms of the grounds and stuff have just been spontaneous i love these videos where i turn up and just randomly go into stadiums but it doesn't always go right like at, at um, Ascot United just then. But obviously, Windsor, phenomenal. Eaton, loved seeing their grounds. Hasn't quite worked here at Bracknell. They don't actually play in Bracknell, I don't believe. Let me know in the comments, Bracknell fans. But we are about to go and visit the biggest team that we will see in this video, and they are known as the Royals.
So Reading Football Club have the nickname the Royals because of their location within Royal Berkshire, of course, although they were known as the Biscuit Men for a number of years and maybe still are as well by some people. Formed in 1871, Reading are one of the oldest clubs in the whole country. So I made a video about Stoke who were formed, what, 1863, Reading 1871. That is one old football club. And of course we spoke about the old Etonians earlier, didn't we? How old they are and some of the other clubs in this area. Um, yeah, I feel like football really flourished in this area um, in the early stages of the game when it was more for um, sort of gentrified I suppose the FA Cup was for these amateurs in inverted commas they didn't want players being paid um, and it was really sort of an elitist thing I feel like in its early days despite being as old as they are Reading actually only first played in the Football League in 1920 and they actually have been here for a game before so I'll overlay some uh, clips that I got of the stadium while I was there for that game uh, while I just tell you a little bit about what they've won as a club so they've won the second tier twice the third tier thrice and the fourth tier once however they've never won the top tier although they have the highest place they have finished in the entire league is eighth and that was in 2007 so fairly recently they've got to the semis of the FA Cup twice and they've been to the quarters of the EFL Cup as well so sadly no major honours for Reading although they have won um, the three tiers of the Football League below the Premier League. So I hope you've learned a little bit about Berkshire today and um, I've shown you Windsor Castle. What did you think of that? Have you ever been before? Um, I know I have a lot of viewers from Scotland so maybe you guys haven't been down to this part of England before. Maybe you have, maybe you're from further afield. What did you think? Um, what did you think of Windsor FC? I feel like that was probably the best football location I went to today. Or oh, Old Etonians, I really enjoyed going there. That was something a little bit different. And again, if there's anyone from Eton watching, which I guess there probably isn't, please get in contact. I would love to make a full scale Eton video, interview one or two people, learn about your FA Cup wins as well. It sounds absolutely fascinating. Um, we then went to Ascot, Bracknell, sadly, we couldn't see them and now Reading as well so the biggest club in the area of course they've been in the Premier League um, in kind of modern times like I say 2007 their highest league finish um, so they are a big club um, I would love to see them back in the Premier League obviously the Royal Reading I think they even have a crown on their badge which I'm just looking at now which must relate to of course the Royals as well so yeah really really cool set of clubs in Berkshire I have loved looking around please do hit that like button and subscribe if you're new and drop your clubs in the comment section below i'd love to hear where you'd like me to go next i will leave some videos on screen please do click on one to carry on watching cheers and i'll see you in the next one